Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the video blog for this week. I pray that this video blog reaches you in health and peace. I just want us to discuss a little bit today about the Shemanite woman. This was a woman that we see her story repeated in the Word of God. We see her popping up in different instances. But the one that I want us to concentrate today comes from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. And basically, it's talking about the Shemanite woman. She obeyed the word of the Lord unto her that came through her, the, the man of God, Elisha, who sent her away from Israel into the uh, foreign land to preserve her from famine. The man of God said to her that the famine would last seven years. And the Bible says that she went to the land of the Philistines and stayed there for seven years. At the end of seven years, the word of the Lord says that she came back. And when she came back, she sought audience with the king. And I love this because the, as the woman was coming in, uh, the Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, was narrating the story of, of, of the man of God and all the exploits that God had enabled him to do. And one of those testimonies was the Shemanite woman. How does this happen? The same time that, she, that the woman was coming to appeal to the king for her, her assets, the king was listening intently and keenly to Gehazi tell of her story. And the Bible says that Gehazi turned to the king and he said, Oh Lord, here, here, right here is the woman that I'm telling you about and her son. And the king invited the woman to tell of her testimony. And the woman shared her testimony with the king. And the king opened a file for her. He opened her case. He opened uh, 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 her, her case in the court system of the land and he appointed one of his government officials to stand over her case and ensure that she was restored amen I was reading in the Jewish Bible that not only was she restored uh, but it says that all the Tevolt in, or, or, or increase. She was to be given her increase. And the Bible says that it was to be calculated from the time she left until the time she came back. I want us to look at, uh, at the restoration of this woman because it, it went beyond restoration into harvest. You know, when you think about it, what were they calculating? It was a famine. There was nothing growing. There was no water. Her father farmland probably had cracks in it. The, the land was barren. If there were trees, there were no more. This woman came back to desolation. And the king said, calculate, sit down and calculate all that this woman was due or owed. I love it because this woman's calculation must have taken an economist. This woman's uh, uh, calculation must have been done by a ministry of finance. And they sat with her. I, I imagine them sitting through and sifting her old bank statements and, and to, in order for them to come with, up with a pro forma of her financials. And, and they sat with her and they calculated her expenses and they deducted those. And they sat down and, and, and figured out how much revenue generating actions it would it would it, it would it, it would take to reach profits. They they must have taken, uh, uh, for instance, one cabbage pre farm famine and calculated how much it was worth. If it was worth a dollar the pre famine, I bet you in the first year of, of famine due to demand, the, the, the demand of one cabbage could have risen to who knows how much, $10,000? That's the first year. In the second year, the demand would have doubled, tripled. Who's to tell how much that one cabbage in, uh, in the second year would have cost? And they had to calculate. And they had to calculate for the first year for the second year, for the third year, until the seventh year. I imagine her sitting down with this government official and him making provisions for expansion. 
Oh yeah, she must have had livestock if she was a farmer. And, and they must have calculated, okay, you had one bull, you had one cow, and, and, and the increase that would have happened in the first year, the second year, the third year. I, I imagine she had farm equipment and, and they must have calculated, oh, now there's a new, there, there's a, there's new farm equipment on the market. And they would have had to calculate the increase that would have come as a direct result of this new farm equipment that she would have had access to. New markets. You, you know, they would have had to calculate, well, you know, she was selling in a local market, but now maybe she would have accessed uh, an, an even greater uh, market outside of her local market. They had to sit down and calculate. I'm so excited. If I was the Shunammite woman, if I was the Shunammite woman and the government official was sitting there and we were in his office, calculating I would have made provisions for my dreams yes you've heard it I would have sat down with him and told him you see those three rocks there my intention was to build an import and export processing zone on my farm I wanted to produce an organic line you see those uh, uh, that rubble of, of wood I had every intention of building a headquarters, a world headquarters, with a television, uh, uh, with a television channel dedicated to showing farmers how to farm. How to say, you see, I wanted to do merchandising, but my, but the famine took away these dreams. I'm telling you, I would have sat down and, and, and calculated not only what I lost. Not only time spent, but I would have made sure that my dreams were calculated in that provision. By the time the king would have been cutting me a check, I am telling you, I would be nowhere near where I started. Amen. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the time and chance happen to them all. Time and chance happen to them all. You know, um, uh, I, I love Bishop Jakes and I, I just love this man of God. He is such an inspiration to me. Uh, he's an inspiration to me because Bishop Jakes has taught on how to seize your moment, on how to maximize your moment. And I'm telling you, the Shemanite woman and the story of the Shemanite woman is, is, is a story of time and chance. It's a story of time and chance and how harvest can be connected to your time and chance. I, I submit to us that Bishop Jakes talks about uh, seven seconds that changed his entire life. It changed his life, not only for him, but it became a transgenerational blessing, meaning that his children and his children's children will benefit from him seizing the moment. I wonder if you went before the king, would you seize your moment? Would you understand that your harvest, your obedience, your serving God, all of it culminates in time and chance and you have an opportunity. I submit in 2016, let us be aware, let us be open, let us understand that time and chance happen to us all and your greatest harvest could be around the corner. Your greatest harvest could come by standing in front of the king. You know, um, I'm, I'm a visual learner and I learn by pictures. And, 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 you know, the other day I was just feeling in my heart, you know, get pictures, you know, put together a collage of things that you desire, dreams that you dream. Because listen, God, God, God can go beyond your wildest dreams. But dream, dream. God can go beyond your wildest imaginations. So imagine the impossible and God can bring it into manifest. Listen, it's a year of harvest. I want harvest. I want my obedience to God. 
my obedience to the word of God to me. It may have taken me into exile. I may have been drawn into the desert by the word of God, but I want to believe the same God can put me before the king. And he is the king of kings. I'm expecting harvest this year. I'm expecting to sow where I didn't even toil. Amen. Because I have walked in obedience. Amen. I just want to encourage you. Your harvest, the greatest harvest is yet to come. Dream.